Hello and welcome to Lord of the Rings Melee. This is to be an equal of the player vs player maps that you can play on Battle.net. This is the version 0.5 despite what the description says. Also this one was made by Hive Workshop member and creator Mad Max. So let me go ahead and select the Isengard. So far or as far as I know, the Isengard are the only race that has a kind of a different terrain under their main building, being the tower. And the terrain is blight, as you can see. Once again, also, some interesting texturing. I mean, I've never seen any Lord of the Rings movie. Oh, what a heretic! Burn him as a witch! Ah, yeah, whatever. I have never seen a full Lord of the Rings movie, but as far as I know, or rather as far as I don't know, the textures look very nice on every one of those nations. So, alright, here is a an example of another base that you can probably start in, and there's one entrance, but it's not only one entrance, you see, there's another, and you can create a backdoor entrance that leads to the main base if you cut down those trees by here. And I think that the music maybe even change <clears throat> sorry, maybe even changes with the races that you play. Right. Either the war rider or a blade master. Uh probably the war rider. I can already tell you that the war rider is in my opinion Well, I find Many of the ooh, Isengard units kind of weak, but we'll see about that later. Alright, creating a control group for all the important buildings. Now that I look at it, building two barracks at the same time was probably too much resource consuming. So the Uruk warrior, look at that model, kind of nice, isn't it? 750 health, that's kind of high for a kind of cheap, how much, 300 gold unit. It has 2 armor and 21 to 22 damage. That's not so good, it's more of a tank unit. Uh, the elves again, bait of my existence. I eh. think I've encountered them in the... Doombar Corsair video as well, but this time you'll see what I mean when I say bane of my existence. You see the thing with Isengard is that they can only fight those that do not have high damage, or have high damage but very low health. And unfortunately, elves have both high damage, medium health but high health regeneration. So that's one Uruk warrior almost dead. A hero getting wrecked by the elves. Just like this is an absolute disaster. Okay, let's try killing that one at least. No, I didn't even kill him. Right. Let me retreat and actually build a fire for once. I regenerate all of those units. It's like, with the Umbar, I have already been through. However, the Isengard units have approximately twice the health of the Umbar units and have a lot more problems breaching through the Elven units. And if I'm going to regenerate my hero, then I might as well build a training dummy. The thing with training dummy, as once already explained, it gives one experience per hit of the hero to the target dummy. So if the game lasts long enough, and if the hero has quite high attack speed, he can get infinite amounts of attack speed without really fighting. Uh, 
Alright. I thought that some crossbowmen might be also a good choice against the elves. Like, medium armor suffers really only from siege. But, as you might have guessed, siege is kind of expensive. And there's the timer. A game has already lasted 5 minutes. Well, sieging the elves has already lasted 5 minutes. And my guess was right. Piercing damage from the crossbowmen, or from any ranged unit, is high enough, and the jerk elf killed one of my rooks. The piercing damage is strong enough to kill the swordsmen before they can cause too much harm. Or too much rage. Depends on the point of view. So, so far it's more like, you build a front line of weak well, high health, but low damage melee troops, and built a line of rangeds, rangeds and the, the pikemen behind them. The thing about Isengard is they have a unique interaction between their own units. You see, the Urk warriors are quite expensive, but at very high health. While the Urk pikemen have less health, I think about 350 or 400, but have small attack range. And their models are just big enough that you can put a swordsman and a pikeman behind him and the pikeman will be able to attack over the swordsman. So like first line warriors, second line pikemen that can not only stand behind the swordsman but they can also attack over the swordsman without being in the attack range other melee units, and behind that several lines of archers. I can imagine that being a quite effective quite effective uh, defense line, because remember, not all units suffer from uh, piercing damage, so having a line of swordsmen to tank, a line of pikemen to deal the melee damage, and several lines of crossbowmen to deal the piercing damage, that can be quite effective, at least that's what I can imagine. Yeah, another Uruk dead. And, uh, well, I was thinking if I should fast forward the next minute, but no. Like, why should I even? Well, why should I? Uh, you'll see it in a minute. Alright. Genu genuinely, I'm... Or, like, so clever, I'm looking away, going to train some units. And would you look at that? Yep. Clever me. How did I manage to lose a hero? I don't even want to know. Like, I know why I was the hero, but... I thought the ogres would have smaller notice range. Like, the range at which they notice you are there and start attacking you. But I think I ran my units straight into those ogres. So. Anyway, I think that the war rider is quite weak here. Mainly because he is absolutely, well, almost absolutely passive. If I'm right, the only active skill he has is Mana Burn. And it only is effective against the uh, heroes, because, like, sure, you can Mana Burn one priest, but what if, what if the enemy gets ten priests? Alright, so let's see the Blade Master. He has an active ability already, and he has at least a Carrion Swarm and the Blade Storm, which are very powerful anti-army skills. If you add in the Roar, I think that the Swordsmaster, who is named Mazuru, is quite a good army hero. Oh, 
Another thing is that the Isengard are the only nation so far that can train the Kodos, and the Kodos can still eat units just like in uh, Casual Warcraft. So I think that the Isengard heroes are just there to support the army. Like, the only one who can deal damage is the Blade Master. But try dealing damage with a 600 health hero. I know the health increases, but it doesn't increase all that much. Let's get a few casters. By the way, some of the units still do not have a, I think, English description, like that there is just the empty text field and that's it. But other than that, most of the units and buildings seem to work properly. And their descriptions seem to be proper as well. As once explained already, the market can... not can. The market refreshes its offers. So like once you can find an Ankh of Reincarnation, the other time you can find, what, Gloves of Haste? The third time you can find a Shadow Ward, which is basically a Sentry Ward that lasts until killed, and that's pretty important. You like, you like put down one, and unless the enemy discovers or kills it by accident, it gives infinite vision. Of that area. Right, there goes the ping, and the enemy is not too far. Right. So the signature like the signature combination for Isengard are the swordsman, pikeman, crossbowman. But the only real unit that I think is the strong one are the war riders. Not only they have siege damage, they also have a critical strike and quite high attack speed. That is very effective against buildings. There's the sound of the uh, roar. It's more like horn. And there you see the AI creeping. It's quite improving, isn't it? Die, L. Feel the pain. Right. So, I think the only really good unit for... Like, without... Com not combined with any other unit are the War Riders. They have Critical Strike, they are quite fast, and have Siege Damage. So you can just like train a group of them and send them onto the enemy base to destroy the unit production line. Just an example. See? Ice Shard, Scrolls, Tomes, Potions. And that will refresh in a few minutes, and the offer of the market will change. As I was told, and as I asked, the offer will change at random. But there are still some restrictions on what can you get and what can you get slash not. For example, you can't get an Infernal Stone. I think that it would be, and watch what happens when the chemical rage is pressed. Oh look, what hero is that? How did he get here? That's one thing that is still not finished, but... That's the only thing about hero that is not finished, like he has a model, he has different skill set. I like him. He's an army hero, I get it. See the damage? That's because of the war riders. They are super effective against buildings. And yeah, aimed down by trees, by living trees. So far, only the elves are the ones who are capable of very powerful defense. And as far as I know, they are also the only ones who managed to use multiple gold mines at the same time. Just see, there's another tree of life. Alright, well. 
Also heroes, just like every unit killed, gives gold. And that, once again, encourages player versus player interaction. Like early fights. And the casters of Isengard have Bloodlust, Firebolt, Unholy Frenzy and Cripple, which are very very powerful spells. And they are all they are all on one unit. Well that's about it. But once again, elves are the only ones who are capable of powerful defense, even as artificial intelligence.